Hi, and welcome to Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Thinker. Today we'll be playing with the system monitoring solution that is inspired by the Home Assistant podcast from last week. We'll start in 10 seconds. Before we go any further, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my channel. Thank you very much, your support really means a lot. And also, thanks to everybody who watched my videos, subscribed to my channel or even liked them. Thank you. And now, let's get cracking with today's video. While listening to the Home Assistant podcast, I really was inspired to implement what Phil was mentioning, his own system monitoring solution. What is system monitoring solution? This will be a solution implemented inside Home Assistant that will track all the necessary services that you care of and will display you information or even warn you with the automations if anything goes down. So, for example, what this can be? No, you will not be monitoring Home Assistant because there is no use in creating Home Assistant automation that will be warning you when Home Assistant is down because it will not work. So, these have to be independent services. For example, this can be your Plex service, or in my case, it will be Ambi. Other service that I will be monitoring is Storage Node from StoreJ, because I need to have this service up and running 99.9% .9 of the time. And I will also be tracking the availability of the MQTT. Why? Because in my system, MQTT is running inside Docker. It is independent of Home Assistant. But if MQTT goes down, most of the stuff that relies on the MQTT will definitely also be going down. In this video, I will be using three ways of monitoring. First option will be ping. And this is something that I already created video of, where you can use ping to track the devices, if they are present or not, for example, your mobile phones. But in this case, I will be using ping to test if the network component, for example, my router, is available or not. Second thing, we'll be using curl or CURL, where it will be downloading the web page or trying to download the web page. If it receives response 200, meaning everything is okay, this means that there is no issue with that service. But if it returns 404 or 500 answer, it means that either the web page is not available or there is a problem with the server, etc. So we will be creating automation that will be triggered anytime the response from that service is something different than 200. And the last thing that we will be doing in terms of monitoring is checking if a specific port is open or not. This can be used for any service that has a different port than 80, but you can also use it for the service of the port 80. Why this is good? Because if the port is open, it usually means, but I said usually, it usually means that the service is up. If the port is closed, that can mean that the service is down, but there can also be possible network issue or the firewall issue. So if you receive state open, this means that the service is available and it can respond on that port, while if the port is closed, that definitely means that there will be no answer on that port for that service. But that's not all. Recently, there was a new addition to the HACS Lovelace components. This is the new uptime card that is available through the HACS by Dylan. And thank you, Dylan, for doing a great job. And as a last step in this video, we will be implementing this HACS card. Why? Because we can create very fancy tracking cards of the status of our systems. So let's get started. Since I already have ping configured for the router, I will be posting here a link to the ping video. Next thing we have to do is we have to create a sensor and a binary sensor. For that, let's open up file editor or Visual Studio Code. Let's open file binary sensor. And after the pink sensor, I will be creating a new one. With this binary sensor, I will be checking availability of the MQTT port. So I'll call this MQTT. Platform will be command line. And command is as follows, command, and here I will paste the command because I make a lot of typos and I do not want to make typo here, v. 
So what we are doing here, we are starting bash and then we are sending following command. We are echoing the output of the device TCP, this IP address and this port. And this is the IP address of my Docker server running uh, MQTT Docker on port 1883. We are pushing the content out, it will not be displayed, and we are checking if this is successful. If it works, we will be receiving answer open, and if not, we will be echoing closed. Let's set next line. We will give it a name, MQTT port status, because we are tracking if the port is opened or not. And as I said previously, usually if port is open, the service is listening. If port is closed, then either the service can be down or, for example, we can have a firewall rule blocking traffic to that port. So in both cases, you should go and investigate what's going on. As binary sensors has two states, on and off, we will be now specifying what answer will be off and what answer will be on. This is done with the following line, payload, off, and for this, we know that port has to be closed. And the next line is payload on. Payload on will be when the port is on. So we now have payload closed off. This is the result of failed try to access the port. And payload on, which means the binary sensor is on, will be if this line passes successfully. Before we go any further, I have to mention that there is a built-in functionality where you can use the TCP platform to check the status of the port and to maybe even receive the answer. This is not the exact web scraping, but you can get some values by using this TCP integration. In the documentation for the TCP integration, as I said, you can create two sensors, binary sensor and sensor, and this does similar things to the previous commands we used or that we'll be using. So we can use the TCP platform to connect to specific host with the IP address and port, then push some kind of payload. And we can also receive an answer for this value template. It can be used. If you look at this one, we can echo something and receive the response. There is response OK and the numerical value. We can then pull this numerical value and use it to create a sensor. Same things goes for this one, using the TCP platform to check the CPU temperature and, as I mentioned, using the binary sensor with the TCP platform to receive on and off status. So you always have multiple options to do similar things inside Home Assistant. Let me go to my sensors because sensors are divided in uh, separate files, each sensor, and I will be calling it storage node status. YAML. Let me put comment here. Status of storage node. As we said, we will be using platform. Command line. Next line will be command. Once again, I will be pasting it because I hate typos and I always make them. There is error here. This has to be minus I. Then the HTTP address. This one is responding to the port 14002. So HTTP, the IP address and the port of that service. We will be pushing this to device null and checking if we are receiving answer 200 or something else. Next, we will give it a name. Store J node HTTP status and scan interval. If you want to make it 10 minutes, we will put here 600. If you want one minute, then put 60. So it has to be in seconds. And this is it. Save this, although everything is automatically saved. So we now have three sensors. Two are binary sensors. One is using the ping platform to check the availability of the router every 30 seconds. The other one is binary sensor using command line to check if the port is open or not. And the third one is the sensor where we are using CRL or curl 
to connect to this specific IP address and see if there is a response from the web server or not. For all this to be available to our system, we have to restart Home Assistant. Configuration, server control, first let's check configuration. If everything is okay, restart. If you did like this video so far, please give me a like, because it means not just a lot to me, but of course to the YouTube algorithms. Thank you very much. And Home Assistant is back online. Let's go to Developer Tools. And in Developer Tools, we should have two new entities. MQTT, port status is on, meaning that the service is up and running. And the next one will be store J, node HTTP status, giving us answer 200. Previously, I already created router, and router is also available. The next step is to add that to our Lovelace user interface. And for this, we'll be using your HACS component, a new one. Let's go to HACS, frontend, and here you will find the uptime card. This is the new card recently created, and we will be using this card to display the values from our sensors we created in a previous step. Install, install, and we will be reloading to clear our browser cache. Let's go to Overview, Synology. Let's press Edit here. We can add a card now, add a card. We have custom uptime card. We can select here the entity name. We can customize the name, MQTT status. Hours to show 24. Okay, status name up. Not okay will be down. We can customize the bar. For example, we can put only here 12 bars and that will divide our day into 12 bars. We can play with the colors, toggle elements, for example, title, icon, status, timeline, footer, and average. If you want, you can also play with this integration a bit more, but for me, this is currently enough. So we now have MQTT status, and let's add additional two statuses. Router 2. For this, we will be adapting the icon color. It will be green unavailable and red if not. We can put this round corner ratio at 4, height at 12, or 10. We now have 12 dots representing the status of the binary sensor. And we will be putting here 48. So we are now showing the value for last 48 hours. Let's save this. And for the third value, we can add it like this. And as you can see, now we have three statuses. One is for the MQTT service, the other one is for the router, and the third one is for my storage node. The next step, of course, is to create automations that would be triggered if something goes wrong. Add automation, start with empty, store J failed. Trigger will be state of the entity store j status when it changes from 200 so anything else than 200 there is a problem action call service notification message problem 
with storage node. Check ASAP. Save. So this now will be triggered anytime the value from this sensor changes from 200 and 200 is a typical HTTP successful opening of the page. So for example, if it changes from 200 to 404, which means the web page is not available, this automation will be triggered. We can create additional automation and this one will be tracking the status of binary sensor. Add automation, start with empty, MQTT port failure. MQTT or status, if it changes from on to anything else, once again, we will be triggering the persistent notification called service persistent notification message MQTT not available. Okay, let's save this. Let me clear notifications here. Let's go back. I will now be stopping my MQTT Docker and if everything works, we will be seeing notification down in the left corner. And yes, we received notification. MQTT not available. If we go here, we can see that current status of MQTT is off. And this is it. As you may have seen, there are a lot of ways on how you can monitor your system. You can be using ping, TCP integration or command line. This all depends on how you want to integrate something and what option will work for the service you want to monitor. There isn't a single solution on how to do that and you may have to try one or two to see what best fits your needs. And this is it for this Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Tinker. I really do hope that you like this video and that you find it useful. If you still have a comment or a question in regard to this video or any previous video I did, you can always find me on the Discord server and the link to it is down in the comment section below. But feel free to leave comment down in the comment section of the video. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified of future updates and I'll be seeing you soon. Until then, bye bye and have fun.